In southeastern Europe, in the hills around Sarajevo, a major city in former Yugoslavia, is a strange abandoned complex. Weaving its way down the side of a mountain is a network of snow-covered concrete walls, bridges and channels. This is such a strange looking site. It curves around with these oblong structures coming out of the high wall. And it kind of starts, but just disappears into the forest. It looks like something from Mad Max, the setting for a futuristic game of death. A concrete channel sits hidden in the forest high above the city. It's covered in graffiti and it's stained with algae and uh, decay. It is a strange place indeed. It's not the only deserted structure here. On different slopes around the city are other devastated buildings. And together they tell of a story of violence and death. But what were they all built for? And what sinister event left them severely damaged and abandoned? Some of the answers are linked to the battle that ripped Sarajevo apart during the terrible war in the Balkans. The siege of Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, became a bloody emblem of the conflict. It began in April 1992, when 13,000 Bosnian Serb troops surrounded the city, and it lasted almost four years far longer than the infamous sieges of Stalingrad and Leningrad during World War II. The events that unfolded here cast a dark and tragic shadow and made men such as Stanislav Galic and Dragomir Milosevic notorious throughout the world. So was the complex built as part of an elaborate military structure? At first sight, it has all the hallmarks of a damaged and war-torn defensive line. This location is strategically important because typically those who hold the high ground in a military conflict have an advantage. In this case, that was very true in terms of artillery positionings and snipers being able to terrorize the city. You've got snipers shooting anybody. We're not just shooting soldiers, we're shooting civilians, we're shooting children. They're shooting people who, who just are caught in the crossfire. It is a ghastly place. In fact, they weren't originally built for war. They were all involved in one of the city's proudest moments. These are the remains of the 1984 Winter Olympic venues. The Winter Olympics were extremely important for Sarajevo. For a start, it's the first time that a socialist state has hosted the Winter Olympics. But for Yugoslavia, it was a chance to put the best foot forward on a world stage. This gives Sarajevo a chance to, to be seen. So they really think with, with that much focus coming onto them from abroad, this is going to do wonders for the Yugoslavian tourist industry. But as previous hosts had found out, the costs of putting on the games often got completely out of control. The decaying structures here tell a story of despair rather than celebration. So was Sarajevo really able to make a success of the games? You're going to need to look after the athletes. You're going to look after everybody who, who's going to come to see the game. So what they've already got, they're going to need to reinvigorate. Well, Sarajevo had to invest a large amount of money in both the venues themselves as well as the infrastructure to handle all of the crowds. So it was quite a daunting task. One of the key sites was this curving concrete channel. And its position on this mountain offers a clue as to what it was a huge bobsleigh and luge track. 
Slavko Malec is a former manager of one of the Olympic venues. This is one of the steepest tracks in the world, where crews were able to achieve super high speeds and had to possess a lot of skill to avoid flipping over. But despite all those elements, the speed, the steepness and the rest, it was still considered one of the safest tracks. Today, its crumbling remains, peppered with holes, tell only of a deadlier use. But was the track and the other sites on this mountain an Olympic success story? On the 8th of February 1984, the world tuned in to find out. The Olympics weren't just successful in a technical and organizational sense. It was also a financial success. The equivalent of a $20 million surplus speaks for itself. I do not remember any Olympic Games that were so successful, especially nowadays. It was the first Winter Olympics to actually make money since the early 1930s. So for the people of Yugoslavia, it was a great success. After the Winter Olympics, the facilities continued to be in use. The luge track, for instance, was used in many World Cup competitions, while the ski resort went on to become one of the most popular in the country. But the sights today show that the Olympic dream was eventually shattered. So what happened? <laughs> I never believed that there could be a war in Sarajevo. Not for one moment did I believe it could happen. Life in Sarajevo was such that you could not foresee war coming here. Just eight years later, in 1992, the Yugoslav Federation was breaking apart and civil war engulfed Sarajevo. For more than three years, fighting between Bosnia's Muslim, Serb and Croat populations tore the region apart. The Bosnian Serbs held the city to ransom and the siege lasted 44 months, the longest siege of a capital city in modern history. The scars of war can still be seen in the pockmarked concrete of the buildings. And the mountainside that housed the bobsleigh track had a deadly role to play. The bobsleigh track was, in effect, the front line between the two sides. And unfortunately, the track was both damaged by mortars and used as an artillery position. All of the nearby facilities were destroyed. Because of its elevated position overlooking the city, this slope and others surrounding Sarajevo became key offensive locations from where Bosnian Serb artillery constantly pounded the city. In the peak of the siege, 300 shells a day rained down on Sarajevo. The Bosnian Serb commander says, shell them to the edge of madness, and he's good to his word. Memories of the city's bright past disappeared as stories of horrific scenes began to emerge. It's even said that the Olympic Hotel was used as a prison. So many thousands of people died during the siege that they ran out of space to bury them. In the end, they had to use the Olympic Arena as a mass cemetery. The ordeal finally came to an end on the 29th of February, 1996. But by then, the lives of 11,541 Sarajevans had already been lost. Today, while some areas have been patched up, the abandoned structures across this mountain still display the visible reminders of a very dark period in the city's history. When you look at what's left from those winter games, we have to look at that 
as a memorial to the spirit and accomplishment of the Yugoslavian people, not to the horrific events that came later.